Hello and welcome to day six of the development journal for my new game here. Um, Joseph is working on the script. He's gotten quite far. He's already at the first boss battle, so that's amazing. Um, which means I got quite a bit of work to do to catch back up, I guess. But um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. There's a lot of uh, you know setup required before we can get going. Um, but I have been slowly chugging away at these animations. So the character here, uh, we got uh, another row done for the side. Um, attacking and also another um, hurt position for the side um, and then there's only one more row left of the attacking so animations are coming along quite nice uh, the character is about halfway done I'd say for the basic or for the major uh, animations there are some more basic smaller ones that I can do later um, let's jump into unity so what I did today is nothing really to progress the visual of the game like the actual actions and stuff that I that I've been doing throughout the rest of the week what I decided was I've I've got a lot of the stuff done that I wanted to try and I've I'm pretty happy with the way that things were going like the my ability to get some some of that stuff on the screen there so what I've done is sort of step back and said okay let's start designing the full prototype of the game and the very first thing you have to think about whether you're doing any type of our, uh, software like websites, uh, you know, desktop software or games or anything, is the architecture you want to use for the software. Now, I was using a, a loose version of model view controller uh, architecture, which was fine. But um, now that I've actually started thinking about how I want to lay out these scenes and how I want to do like cut scenes and then the different worlds, and I really started thinking about tile maps and how to how to make sure I manage memory and manage uh, uh, game objects and all that properly, which is a huge topic. Um, because of thinking about all that kind of stuff, I thought, why don't I tighten up this model view controller and really get it down to where I want it? And at the same time, I can start uh, managing uh, some garbage collection all on my own. When, uh, when you look into Unity at all, uh, nobody really ever talks about garbage collection or how to structure the code so you're not wasting resources. Uh, that's talked about very little, especially the garbage collection side, because one major reason for that is Unity does its own garbage collection. Um, just like a lot of these higher uh, level languages, they do all that for you, so you don't really have to think about it like you would a, a, you know, a standard C uh, language where you have to allocate memory and all that kind of stuff. So nobody ever talks about it or thinks about it. But the problem in games is, Games are getting bigger and bigger, especially the game I'm thinking of with a large map. I'm going to have a lot of game objects uh, instantiated uh, all at once. So, well, that, that's a possibility I could have. I want to stay away from that. But let's say most games, they do that. They just throw a whole bunch of stuff out in, into the game. What happens is you, you run out of memory at some point, and Unity is great when it says, oh, you're running out of memory, let me just do run some garbage collection and, and see if I can free some stuff up for you which is amazing, but if you're in the middle of a game, that's going to cause the game to, to slow down a little bit, frames will be dropped, and maybe you, you'll even lag. And that's a, a terrible thing for a user experience in a game, especially a fast-paced shooter. If all of a sudden your gun stops working the way you want it to, or the bullets are going slower, um, people will stop playing your game. It's just that simple. So uh, I know that's a bit dramatic uh, example of garbage collection inside of a game, but one thing we can do to help stop that from happening is use the Unity's garbage collection as a backup. And let's take care of a lot of that stuff up front. So what I've done is I've created some controller objects, just um, some singleton uh, static classes here that we're going to use as the main controllers for everything. So I, I created one main controller that does all the scene uh, navigation. And there I, I created a... Um, uh, a state machine that goes through a bunch of different uh, states in in loading a a scene. So there's like the resetting of the last scene and doing garbage collect, garbage collection. Then so getting rid of stuff we're not using. Then I asynchronously load um, the level the scene level in, um, and then I um, then I wait for that to load and I can show a progress bar as that goes. And then after that's done loading, I um, I get rid of all the unnecessary objects. I'm also going to have a, a, a pooling system where I can actually pool things in whatever I need. I, I throw into like a pool. Uh, and then there's, um, I think there's like, there's a couple more steps, but there's essentially there's uh, another garbage collection thing at the very end just to make sure the new scene that came in, there's nothing really that I don't need in there. Gets rid of all that stuff. Uh, and then there's some final stages, which are running the scene. Um, I, I guess the last one is running uh, the scene, and it's just constantly checking to see if, if we're asking for a new scene. And if we are at, at any point in that time asking for a new scene, it just resets all the way back to the top, does its garbage collection, asynchronously loads the next scene, and it goes through. This is all happening very quick, and, I, and I've developed a little thing here to illustrate that. 
So I have all these singleton classes here for my controller, and I wanted to start breaking out the code into much more uh, like this type of architecture, but uh, much more strict. So I took all of the input stuff and I put it into a new folder here, and I called them gamepad input and keyboard input, and there's gonna be another one, touchscreen input. So I rewrote those uh, classes there, and I have them uh, uh, being attached to the camera of the different scenes, and then they're also looking for a base controller, um, which is in the controllers here. So it looks for this base controller, and it says, I'm gonna talk to you and tell you if, some, if an input has come in. And when an input has come in, um, this base controller is the parent of different uh, controllers to the different scenes. So I have the game scene controller, I have the menu controller for when you're in the menu uh, scene, and then I have a, p a player controller um, that also can access the stuff, but I haven't really utilized that for the controls yet. I've taken the tr controls away from the player and put them into the actual scene because uh, I, I had them originally on the player, but now I'm thinking if you're in a menu, you want to have the controls control the menu, or if you're in the um, uh, inventory, you want to have the controls control the inventory, and then when you're in the actual game motion, like the actual gameplay, then it can control the player. So I, I, I wanted to be able to control a lot of different things, so that's why I hooked up into the base controller instead of the player controller. So I did all that. This is a lot of refactoring, so that's done. Um, so I'm just going to show you. There's nothing really happened. Uh, it starts off with nothing on the screen because we're in the uh, the main controller. The main controller then goes through all that garbage collection and then scene asynchronously loading and loads in the menu controller first. Now the menu controller is now listening for events, and I've had it so like maybe you hit A on the on the controller to progress or X on the controller or um, you hit a key. In this case, I'm using the keyboard, so I'm just going to hit E to change the scene. And that would be like start the game. So I hit E, and then it does all that uh, scene transition with garbage collection, and it goes through and it loads the game scene. Right? So the game scene, now I have um, you know the controller moving around. I rewrote all the controller uh, code, the input code, so the controller, the, the character still moves just like before, but it's done in the background a little bit differently, a, a much cleaner way. It's very separated out. And then I... Uh, I can't remember what I did to, I think I did mouse click, okay. So a mouse click will transition back to the main menu. So th that really doesn't really have much other than how I laid out the code. And that was, this was a test to see if how I laid out the code was working without any errors. So uh, the console has no errors, which is amazing. Um, one thing you wanna do throughout all of this is uh, check your, um, your resources through the profiler. So in this case, I'm going to check the CPU usage and I was working on garbage collection today. So let's take a look at what happens here. So I'm going to go up here and uh, actually close this down. So nothing's going on in the game. And when I load, remember it's gonna load that main controller, which is gonna look for a scene, in this case, the menu scene. That's the one I asked for first. It's gonna load all that in, do garbage collection, and then it's gonna run. So let's take a look at, this is just gonna be a garbage collection um, uh, graph here. So it goes and then boom, it shoots up as soon as it starts the process and there's the garbage collection happening, nothing else. So we can see nothing's going on, but if I change scenes again by hitting E, you can watch the garbage collection happen again. It takes care of it all up front, and that was all in the transition between scenes, so the player doesn't really care at that point. And I even have it so there's a loading section where if it does take a little bit of time, I can show a progress bar or even a whole screen that has like tooltips and things, or like, you know, this gun does this thing and this, uh, you know, item does that. You know, a lot of games do that when they're waiting to load different scenes. So, um... I can just click again and we'll change back and see garbage collection. So it just is putting the garbage collection in our hands so we're in control of when it happens. Obviously as a backup there still is the Unity garbage collection that's going to uh, do it on its own if it if it does need to allocate more memory. So that's sort of what I worked on today. It's, I know it's not flashy for the game but it's really important things that you have to think about and this is all leading up into creating cutscenes and creating maps which I needed to figure this out before I started wasting time and having to rewrite all those things later on. So. That's it for now. Really not much to show uh, visually, but a lot of really cool stuff going on with the code and a few little animations. So thanks for listening on this long video, but wanted to get a lot of that stuff done, uh, like journaled or logged or whatever that I did today. So cool. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.